Hey, hey, welcome. So glad that you're here today. And today I want to focus on how to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 that God said, Jesus said that I should give you power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. It was prophesied in the book of Joel chapter 2, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and young men and young women shall have vision, all men and all women will have dreams and, and then even upon your bond servants is the Bible. Acts 2.38, it says that uh, after they were asked, what, what, what is this? And he says, well, repent. He says, turn around, uh, turn around and give your life to God. And, and then he says at the very end, he says, and, and, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How do you pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that endowment of power where you get to glorify God in a heavenly language? Well, the first thing is you got to desire it. You got to want it. You got to want it and you got to want it more than anything. The Bible says in John chapter 8, if anyone thirsts after me, the Bible says out of the innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And this it says Jesus, uh, actually the comment that John makes about that verse, John the Apostle, that this was regarding the promise that was to come about the Holy Spirit. You got a thirst for it. When I, when I uh, saw my twin brother and he uh, had the presence of God and he had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I, I remember saying, I want that. He's my twin, so I really know him. But I said, I don't have what he has. Uh, I need that. And I began to desire. And when I reached that really apex point, that's when I just, I remember that day I cry out to God. I said, how can I sin? What a sinner I am. And then unexpectedly, right there, the Lord gave it to me. And I, I had never felt so much power in my life. It made me bold. It made me strong in God. And, and it was like a river flowing out of me. And so you got to desire it. Second, you got to believe that it's for you. It is promise, as I mentioned before. The promise is for you. Peter puts it this way in Acts chapter 2. He says it's for you, for your children, and for every other generation thereof. So this is not, God is not treating the New Testament Christians any better than, than our generation. Let me put it this way. If the disciples needed it, we need it. If Paul the Apostle needed it, we need it. Uh, if, if the New Testament church needed it, we need it. Uh, we living in very difficult times and we need the power of the Holy Spirit. You must believe it is for you and it's for this generation because if you don't, you won't receive it. Here's the last thing. You got to ask for it. You got to ask for it. You got to ask for it because God is not going to uh, uh, push himself upon you. You, you. The Bible says you don't have because you don't ask. If you ask, you shall receive. And, and actually when he was speaking about that, he says, ask and you shall receive, knock and it shall be open. Uh, what he was talking about there, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. And so, and the key word there in the tense, in the original Greek, it means, so consistent, consistently ask, consistently pursue, consistently knock. He says, come to me, pursue me through prayer, and I will answer it, and I will fill you. Oh, may the Lord fill you with his Holy Spirit today. May you overflow. May you be drenched with the Holy Spirit. May you be like a sunken ship who has surrendered to the Lord, and every aspect of your life will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. May you be like a piece of clothing that is uh, has been dyed, and every fiber of your soul is been touched by the Holy Spirit. God bless you today.